let me discuss the treatment and after that I will discuss what are all the various tests of the pituitary insufficiency. How will you test for growth hormone insufficiency? How will you test, test for prolactin insufficiency? How will you test for ACTH insufficiency? How will you test for TSH insufficiency? All that I will discuss after the treatment, after the discussion of the treatment for the hypopituitarism. So, very important is the hormonal replacement therapy. So, in the hormonal replacement therapy, first and foremost, the very important hormone that has to be replaced on an emergency basis will be the glucocorticoids. Followed by that, the other hormone that need to be supplemented is thyroid hormone need to be supplemented, then growth hormone, then sex hormones, then if there is posterior pituitary extension, that is the point when there will be vasopressin deficiency in which you need to give vasopressin analog that is desmopressin okay so this hormonal replacement therapy it is usually safe and it is completely free of the complications right and patients who are having this glucocorticoid replacement patients in need of glucocorticoid replacement they require especially careful dose adjustment okay when do they require this careful dose adjustment of the glucocorticoids is ma mainly when the individual is suffering with a stressful event right when the individual is suffering with a stressful event that is the point when the glucocorticoid replacement has to be dosed adequately now what will be that stressful event that particular stressful event will during the acute illness that stressful event is during a dental procedure and this particular stressful event will be during a trauma this particular stressful event will be during the hospitalization so during these stressful events the requirement of the cortisol should be adequately dosed right it should be especially carefully dose adjustment has to be done now, if you take the exact hormonal replacement therapy, right, first and foremost, what did I tell you? That is steroid supplementation. That steroid supplementation, why is that we are giving? That is because of the ACTH deficiency. And the steroids, what we, what all forms of steroids can be given is either hydrocortisone should be given. This hydrocortisone dose, it is around 10 to 20 milligrams per day and this has to be given in divided doses right and another important form of the steroid is cortisone acetate and if at all if you are giving this cortisone acetate the cortisone acetate should be given at a dosage of 15 to 25 milligrams per day right 15 to 25 milligrams per day in divided doses then followed by that prednisolone should be given and this prednisolone right this prednisolone whatever you are supplementing you need to supplement 5 milligrams early in the morning okay so that is the steroid supplementation secondary to ACTH deficiency and these patients they are also having secondary hypothyroidism because of TSH deficiency for which you need to give levothyroxine your LT4 stands for levothyroxine what should be the dosage of the levothyroxine that should be around 75 micrograms per day to 150 micrograms daily you should give early in the morning empty state you need to give this levothyroxine and these patients they also have the FSH and as well as the LH deficiency for that what should be the supplementation of the sex hormones in males and as well as in females so if you take the sex hormone replacement in males that will be a testosterone gel right testosterone gel and this particular testosterone gel the dosage is around 5 to 10 grams per day the second important formulation is testosterone skin patch And third important formation is testosterone enanthate.
right this testosterone enanthate it is an intramuscular formulation right and whenever you are giving this testosterone enanthate the dosage is 200 milligrams intramuscular you have to give it every two weeks okay so that is about the supplementation in males testosterone gel testosterone skin patch testosterone enanthate then you take the supplementation of the hormones in females so the supplementation of the sex hormones in females they include conjugated estrogen so it is not only the conjugated estrogen you also need to supplement the progesterone right conjugated estrogen and as well as the progesterone has to be supplemented and this particular conjugated estrogen whatever you are supplementing the dosage it should be 0.65 to 1.25 milligrams and for how long you need to give this you need to give this for nearly around 25 days whenever you are giving this conjugated estrogen then the other one is the progesterone so progesterone it should be given at a dosage of 5 to 10 milligrams and on which days you should give you should give on days 16 to 25 of the menstrual cycle we have also the skin patches the skin patches they include estradiol skin patch right estradiol skin patch so these are the sex hormone supplementation estrogen progesterone and then the estradiol skin patch okay and for fertility you need to give gonadotrophins okay for restoring the fertility you need to give gonadotrophins right so this is about the treatment in females with lh and as well as the fsh deficiency next is how is that you will treat the growth hormone deficiency in adults what is that you need to give you need to give somatotropin and the supplementation of this somatotropin it is through subcutaneous route and what is the dosage of this somatotropin this is around 0.1 to 1.25 milligrams subcutaneously that is about your somatotropin in adults whereas if you take the supplementation of somatotropin in children the dosage of the somatotropin it is around 0.02 to 0.05 milligrams per kg per day that is the dosage in the children so that was about your growth hormone deficiency and if there is extension of hypopituitarism into posterior pituitary there is vasopressin deficiency you need to give a vasopressin analog and that particular vasopressin analog is desmopressin and the route of administration of this desmopressin we can give through the intranasal route so we can also give through oral and as well as subcutaneous and we also have the intranasal route or even the oral route of oral formulations of desmopressin and whenever you are giving the intranasal formulation remember right remember this intranasal formulation you have to give 5 to 20 grams twice daily but whenever you are giving an oral route then oral route of desmopressin the dosage is around 300 to 600 micrograms that is what you have to give if you are giving the oral route of the vasopressin okay so this is about the treatment of the hypopituitarism